Hello fellow sim racers, today I'm taking a look at the Suzuka mod track that's been brought to Assetto Corsa by the prolific folk from the Assetto Corsa reboot project. For those that aren't aware, the guys from the Assetto Corsa reboot project have committed themselves to bringing classic track mods from other titles into Assetto Corsa. Their modus operandi is to take mods that have been abandoned or left incomplete and update them to modern standards. Now, for a sim like Assetto Corsa that lives and dies with the available mod content, having access to a large library of tracks is a huge bonus. And the guys at the ACRP are more than doing their part, with around 15 tracks either complete or in progress. Now that we've got the context bit out of the way, let's talk about this Suzuka mod. This is a track that should need absolutely no introduction whatsoever. Simply put, Suzuka is one of the world's greatest racetracks, so this mod has a lot to live up to. First of all, it's worth pointing out that this mod is version 0.9, which means that, while it's pretty much complete, we can still expect some tweaks going forward. Starting with the track layout, because, well, it's rather important, the good news is that it feels pretty much right to me. The original track layout, designed by John Hugenholtz of Zandvoort fame, has been tweaked a fair bit over the years, but this mod does a great job of capturing the feel of the circuit as it is today. All of the iconic corners feel spot on to me, and I was up to speed on this mod track in no time at all, relying on my track knowledge from other titles. If I were to nitpick, the first part of the Dunlop curve seems a little steeper and a tiny little bit tighter than it appears from onboard footage, however this could easily be a trick of perception and camera angles, so I'm not willing to say this is wrong, just that it looks a little off to my very much untrained eyes. The track mesh for this Suzuka mod does a good job of representing the surface of a modern FIA Grade 1 circuit. That is to say, the surface is detailed and there are numerous small bumps and undulations, but these are nothing compared to the kind of potholes and ravines that you might expect in a more, um, characterful venue. While we're talking about the track surface, it's also worth noting that the track textures look pretty decent too to me. There are a good number of track side details represented here, including the iconic ferris wheel. Arguably, some of these details are a little bit lower fidelity than we've come to expect over the last couple of years. However, this is a conversion from, I think, an R-Factor mod, so I think it's fair to cut it a little bit of slack here. Wrapping things up, the AI works very well and it seems pretty fast to me, which is always a good sign. The start lights work properly, which seems like an odd thing to comment on, but it's not something you can take for granted with the Seto Corsa mod tracks. And finally, leaving the most important detail to last, the hot air balloon moves across the sky. With the usual caveat that I feel a little bad criticising a completely free mod, there are some areas where there's room for improvement. First of all, as mentioned previously, some of the trackside details are a touch on the low fidelity side, and some of the smaller trackside details are altogether absent. If you compare this track to, say, the iRacing version, it does look a little sparse if I'm honest. Another area that's a little bit on the plain side are the replay TV cameras, around half of which are fixed in place and don't pan with a car's movement. This is actually a big downside for someone like me that makes lots of videos, but if you're just in it for the racing, you may not even notice. So that's a quick rundown of what I think about this Suzuka mod. Now, let's take a lap of this iconic circuit in the equally excellent McLaren MP422 by the VRC modding team. The aptly named but underrated first corner's a real gem. Throw the car in at high speed and immediately start decelerating for the second apex, which is technically turn two. Turn three is the first part of the famous Snake S's. The sequence of corners is absolutely critical, and getting offline early on can cost you all the way through to the Degna turns. Turn 6, the anti-bank curve, is a tricky off-camber little number, and overcooking it will put you offline for Dunlop. Carefully accelerate all the way up the hill of the opening left-hander that is the Dunlop curve, before throwing the car into the first Degna turn. Run as wide as you dare and then brake heavily for Degna 2. We get a quick breather as we pass under the bridge, and then through the kink at turn 10 into the tricky braking zone for the hairpin. Getting good traction here is critical to your lap time, as it's a very long run down to the braking zone for Spoon. 200R is flat out in most cars, but I can tell you it is pretty scary in the new DRM Lancia. Spoon is a super technical corner, the first part of it requires real commitment, but then you have to wait for what feels like forever before you can get back on the power for the blast down to 130R. 130R itself isn't the terrifying white knuckle ride it used to be. As you can see, even flat out, I've got plenty of grip left over here in this McLaren. 
Get the car stopped for the deceptively tricky Casio Triangle. The first apex is over a crest and it's very easy to carry a little too much speed and miss the second apex, just like I did here. Luckily, it doesn't cost you much time. The run down to the start finish line is short and sweet, or at least it is in this sublime McLaren MP4 22. So, that's what this Suzuka mod looks like from onboard a mid 2000s Formula 1 rocket ship. Hopefully, that lap helps convey some of the concentration and commitment that Suzuka demands of those that drive this legendary circuit. And for me, that's the most important thing about this mod. I think it does a great job of capturing what's most important about Suzuka. Sure, some of the finer details are missing, but that doesn't detract at all from how this track feels to drive. If you're interested in giving this mod a try out for yourself, I've put the link down in the description. But to be honest, Suzuka is such an important motorsport venue that I don't think anyone will need too much convincing. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. As always, thank you for donating your precious time by watching. It is very much appreciated. So, all that's left to say is goodbye and enjoy the rest of your day.